good morning. Good morning, bienvenidos and bonjour. Thank you for joining Orange Public Schools for the fourth annual um, parent conference um, with the theme, Education Builds Community. Uh, we have a series of engaging and informative workshops lined up for you today. So make sure you're nice and comfortable, um, sit back and enjoy the program, all right? My name is uh, Mr. Devone, and I am the district's community engagement officer. Um, my office is located at the district board office, which is um, located at 451 Lincoln Avenue in Orange. Um, and I'll be serving as the host for today's um, conference. Um, in an effort to ensure all, all of the participants can enjoy the conference, um, all presentations will be translated into Spanish and Haitian Creole. With that said, I'd like to introduce Ms. Angie, um, who is the community school coordinator at Forest Street Community School, who will provide some instructions to anyone who would love to hear the program um, translated in Spanish. I think she'll be followed by Mr. Sanchez, who is the community school coordinator at Lincoln Avenue School, who, who will provide information regarding anyone who would prefer to hear the presentations in Haitian Creole. So without any further ado, Uh, Ms. Angie. Buenos días, padres. Como dijo el señor Devon, tenemos la capacidad de traducir esta reunión si usted desea. Si está iniciando su sesión eh, con un, desde tu, su computadora, usted puede tocar el símbolo que usted ve aquí en pantalla que dice interpretación o interpretation. Cuando usted lo toque ahí, usted va a ver las opciones de inglés, español o francés. Usted va a tocar la, el idioma indicado que usted quiere escuchar la reunión en. Igual, si usted se está metiendo por un tablet o por su teléfono, tiene la misma opción, va a haber tres puntitos en la mano derecha abajo y ahí usted lo va a tocar y ahí usted va a ver la, la opción Language Interpretation. Usted va a tocar eso, la interpretación le va a dar las opciones de los lenguajes que va a ser inglés, español y francés y ahí usted va a tocar español si es necesario. I will turn it over now to Mr. Sanchez for our Haitian Creole speaking families. Thank you, Angie. Bonjour tout le monde. Jean-Angie avec Barry Sodi, il dit comme ça, si nous t'en vitons de tout ça que fait aujourd'hui à la créole, il y a trois options pour ça faire. Nous avons regardé sur le screen la cunia, nous avons regardé le dernier mot qui est là, après qui est là, qui dit interpretation. Nous avons choisi, nous avons anglais, nous avons français, nous avons espagnol. Nous avons choisi ça qui dit français. L'un choisi français, nous avons entendu des gens qui parlent, qui ont tout le programme pour aujourd'hui. Merci. OK, thank you, uh, Mr. Angie. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez, for that. I'm going to give just a few seconds to allow for everyone who would love to um, utilize the interpretation feature to log on. I'll give them like 10 seconds to do that. And then right after that, we will um, watch our former uh, preschool students, students lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. those young um, students just wonderful that was obviously uh, recorded at an earlier time pre-pandemic um, and now I would like to introduce um, the superintendent of schools Dr. Joe Fitzhugh II who will offer some words of welcome before we start the um, conference. Dr. Fitzhugh. Good morning good morning everyone panelists good morning and good morning to all of our families here in Orange Township. I also have on the line this morning our board president Ms. Shaniqua Johnson So I don't know if Ms. Johnson would just like to say good morning to our families before um, I begin. Ms. Johnson. Good morning, families and friends. I am 
so glad to attend this event. I am looking forward to seeing what you guys have to offer. So we continue to make good to great. All right. So it is such a pleasure to be here this morning as we look through some of the um, program highlights. I Come promise on. you, I promise you it is going to be a parent conference like no other. We may be virtual, but we are not going. We are yeah. still here to provide all the services for all of our families. And when I tell you, I'm so happy that we have our families here during a Saturday morning, up and ready to go. Kudos to all of you. So I want you to sit back, I want you to relax, and I want you to be with us for the next two hours, listening to the great panelists, give us some important information about what we can do as a community to strengthen one another and keep ourselves whole. Thank you so much for having me and all the panelists this morning, Mrs. Devon. Thank you, um, Dr. Fitchie, for those kind words and for um, school board president. Um, we all know that education builds community and that's what we're about. Um, I'd like to welcome specifically today, not only uh, the families and the parents, but the high school students who are joining us um, for the program today. Um, as communicated in the flyer, um, you will receive up to two hours of community service for participating in today's program. But please, you need to remain on the webinar to receive a full credit for those um, community service hours. And at the end, there will be a Padlet link placed in the chat that will pose a question that we'd like for you to answer. So please remain on the webinar until the end. Um, and that Padlet link will be placed in the, um, in the chat and I will provide instructions at the end of the program. So without any further ado, let's begin today's program. So today we have the honor and privilege of having um, one of our regional, national, and, and luckily local thought leaders with us today, um, Dr. Lincoln Miller, who is the Chief of Infectious Diseases at St. Barnabas Medical Center. He will be providing an update on COVID-19, which has aff um, affected all of us over the last year. So without any further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Miller and um, welcome. Thank you. So everybody can hear me, I hope. Good. So uh, it's my pleasure to be here, um, Mr. Devon and, and all the other panelists. And um, I, I'd like to start by just talking and acknowledging, you know, it's been a very difficult year for all of us. And um, many people have been affected by the COVID pandemic. And um, thank God we've made some progress in terms of our ability to fight this virus, to treat people that have the infection. And we've made great strides in terms of prevention. Uh, the most important thing I want to emphasize is the importance of vaccination, really, as sort of the path to, to get out of this uh, difficult situation that we've been in for so long. And I want to just talk a little bit about the vaccine, because I know there's lots of anxiety about vaccination. And uh, I want to say right up front that all three vaccines that are currently available to uh, residents of, of, our, of our state and our country are safe and they work and they prevent you from getting a bad sickness that could lead to hospitalization and, and severe complications. Basically, they work very effectively. So we have a, there's a Pfizer vaccine, there's a Moderna vaccine, and there's a J&J &J vaccine, and they work a little bit differently. Um, and you've probably heard some are better than others, but it really depends on when these vaccine trials were done, the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine have higher efficacy rates around 94, 95%. Uh, the J&J &J one uh, is only in 80s, but uh, it, it's really parsing out small differences, really, because the power of the J&J &J vaccine and the others as well is really they, they prevent you from getting a severe illness that requires you to be hospitalized. And that's really what we're trying to do to prevent here. Now, gosh forbid, if you do get hospitalized and get sick, we, I just want to emphasize as well that we've made tremendous strides in terms of treatment. And so I've been on the front lines taking care of patients uh, from the beginning of the pandemic when we really did not have a lot of good therapies to offer. And, and things really evolved and changed rapidly over the last um, nine months. And we now have multiple therapies that are effective. And so we have a new paradigm now. We have people that are, that are getting sick and getting infected and getting admitted to the hospital. 
and we have treatments. We have uh, Decadron, which is a steroid treatment that was worked out by our colleagues in England. Uh, it's shown to be very effective. And we have remdesivir. We have one drug that was developed uh, in the United States that also helps. And so we have a paradigm of people that do get sick, that come in and get hospitalized, get better and they get discharged. So that's really a huge change from how things were, as you all know, back in, in March and April and May and stuff. So, so we have the ability to fight and treat this disease, which makes a huge difference. We also have other therapies available for people that are sort of recently infected, monoclonal antibodies. And it's important to note that if you do get sick and are, are diagnosed uh, as soon as possible, it's important to talk to your physician because, and you can get referred to St. Barnabas and other hospitals because we are offering this antibody therapy, which if instituted early enough, within the first, ideally within the first three days or so after you're infected before people do get symptoms, uh, it prevents the development of more severe illness. So it's something really to consider. So when someone is diagnosed as soon as possible, you wanna seek medical care and, and find out about this. So why should you get vaccinated? That's a really you know, important question and important to help allay anxiety about it. This is really the best way for you to protect your family, your loved ones, your neighbors, and all those in our community and stuff, because we're trying to get to this concept of herd immunity where we get approximately 75, 80%. It's, you know, I've listened to our world expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci said, that's what's necessary to achieve uh, uh, this herd immunity so that we all have the protection. So it's important that everybody buys in to getting vaccinated. And I know there are certainly people that are anxious about it, but um, the vaccines are safe uh, and they prevent you from getting sick. And it's very, very important, particularly as we're focusing on groups and we're sort of um, doing the stratified approach and the, the Government in the state, uh, Governor Murphy has just lowered the age to 55, which is going to start on Monday. And there are many, many groups. Teachers are being vaccinated. All of our essential workers are being vaccinated. And, uh, and it's being expanded to the general population. So over the next few months, we hope that all adults will be vaccinated in the state of New Jersey. And that's really what we're trying to achieve. But vaccination represents really the best way that you can sort of protect your family and stuff. So. In my family, for example, we started out trying to get uh, my, my parents or, you know, in their early 90s and my father-in-law who's 91. Uh, and it was difficult. My, my parents live in New York. It was hard. My, my parents just got vaccinated um, a couple of weeks ago. So it was difficult to get vaccination in some places. And, and I know we had some issues like this in New Jersey, but fortunately we've been able to get most of the older people vaccinated and stuff. So that's a really important thing because we like to think about the people that are most vulnerable in terms of getting a uh, vaccination uh, as soon as possible and stuff. So we're targeting the older, the people that have underlying medical issues too, that's certainly a large group. So we're trying to target those. So anybody obviously in your immediate family, we wanna make sure that those people are, are targeted and, and enabled and allowed to get a vaccination. So we know the road to that path in New Jersey, we have excellent, excellent um, website and accessibility and in, um, your state, uh, county rather, of Essex County, which has actually one of the higher vaccination rates of all the counties in New Jersey. They have a really good infrastructure and there are lots of local areas around uh, Essex County that are doing vaccination. And there's another one that the governor just announced that's gonna be happening in Newark at NIT that's gonna be starting up and that's gonna have the power to do 6,000 a day. So there are lots and lots of good access points to do it. So I just can't tell you enough how important it is to get vaccinated, to protect the people, the loved ones in your family. And ideally, we all want everybody in our family to be vaccinated. So we haven't started vaccinating children yet, um, but that's gonna be the last group going, going forward. But the first goal is to get all the adults vaccinated and, um, and then we're moving on in, into the children. And um, there are each of the vaccine make manufacturers are, are doing clinical trials to show that it is safe with children as well. And, uh, and those are ongoing and we should have some data from those studies in, in the next few months and stuff. All right, so uh, those are some of the main points I wanted to make about the vaccination. And let's talk about uh, what happens if you and your loved ones are able to get vaccinated. How does that change your behavior? So this is something that's really important because a lot of people don't realize that if you still, if you do get vaccinated, there's a small risk that you could still become infected. Not, not every um, vaccine protects 100%. Um, so, for example, grandma, is she's vaccinated, um, 
and she wants to see her niece or nephew uh, or son or children, um, it's still important that, um, that the family members um, wear masks when they're around grandma and, uh, and, and consider that they could bring the virus still into her house basically and stuff. Just because she's vaccinated doesn't mean she's 100% protected. And so I see that with my own family. My father-in-law um, had a, a niece visit him and she wasn't wearing a mask. And she said, oh, well, you know, he's vaccinated. And I had to talk to her and said, well, you know, that's not really uh, the way it is because he still could get infected. And, uh, and, um, and you still don't wanna bring it into the house. So it's very important that we think about uh, if you do get vaccinated, you still have to wear a mask when you go out, when you go to the stores. Uh, and, uh, and you still have to protect. And, uh, and again, it's the concept of thinking about your community. It's not even so much of getting yourself infected or not, it's protecting your loved ones, basically, I think. So there's a sense of commonality and community that we really need to develop in terms of fighting COVID because you don't wanna, you don't wanna bring it home to grandma and grandpa or your parents or, or brothers and sisters or anybody like that. So you have to be mindful of that. And that's why it's really essential that we still go on and, and continue to wear masks. Eventually, when we have that so-called herd immunity, uh, or you have a unit where everybody is vaccinated in the unit, uh, like your family, um, if you have older people in your family unit and everybody gets vaccinated, well then, uh, yes, that's fantastic. And then you'll be able to sit down and have dinner and, uh, and, and not wear masks and socialize and stuff in a, in a group situation if everybody in the unit is, is vaccinated. So that's really sort of where we're trying to go, but, but we do have a ways uh, to go before we get there, basically. Um, so I just want to emphasize, too, that, um, that St. Barnabas has resources. We've, we've helped out with some of the vaccine uh, sites. There's one in, um, in West Orange at Sears. I know uh, other people mentioned some of the other ones that we're participating in. There is some ongoing vaccination at our facility at the hospital itself. And we're also sponsoring other, helping out with other vaccination sites in, in Essex County and some other counties in, in, in New Jersey as a whole. But um, so I think that everybody really should think about uh, the importance of, of trying to get vaccinated, trying to get vulnerable members of your family vaccinated, uh, but uh, being mindful that you still have to do the hard things the social distancing, the mask wearing, you know, the, the things that sort of isolate us and prevent us from having that human bonding and, and communication that we so dearly need as human beings, but it's still necessary to continue to do to go forward so that we can sort of get ourselves out of this difficult pandemic scenario. So I'll stop there and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions anybody might have about uh, vaccination treatment, any issues at all that you wanna discuss. All right, um, Dr. Mill, I'm looking into the um, Q&A. Sure. And the first question is, can a person that recovered from COVID, um, do they need to get vaccinated? Yes, that's a really excellent question, Mr. Devone. So we're recommending people that have or have not have COVID should get vaccinated. And I'll just say we're doing um, some clinical trials where we're looking at people and we're measuring their antibody responses. And guess what? It turns out that the people that have had COVID uh, have the best responses to the vaccine. So they have a powerful immune response and they make what are called neutralizing antibodies. And the people that have already been uh, infected tend to have the best results. So we're strongly recommending that yes, if you've had COVID, uh, as long as you're no longer infectious, and we remember that uh, the state and the CDC recommends uh, quarantine for at least 10 days for, for the average person who is not immunocompromised, that they stay, but following that period of time, so say at least two weeks after you've been sick, you're certainly eligible to be vaccinated and you should be vaccinated, yes. Okay, great. And the other one is, does a student have a choice to decline to be vaccinated? I think. Yes, everybody has the right to decline vaccination. That's very important. And no one's gonna be forced or pressured into, into being made to do anything. I think that's very important particular people that are wary of vaccination. But I would like to think that uh, by talking to people like me and other people in the community that are, uh, that are pro-vaccination, uh, that people will come around in, on their own terms and, and decide that you know, this is something that they think is best for them to do. But, but nobody is ever gonna force you to be vaccinated. All right. And I have a question, um, risk factors, um, I'm assuming this is regarding the va um, va vaccines, um, side effects, 
Um, how common are they? Um, for example, blood clots and headaches. Okay. So um, the real contraindication to getting the vaccine, and this really pertains more to the Pfizer vaccine, is there's a very small number of people that have severe allergic reactions to a component of the vaccine itself. So if you do have, everybody gets monitored after they're vaccinated and make sure they don't have a severe allergic reaction. If you do, uh, we'll be treated at the site. They're all prepared to, to, to skillfully treat you there. Um, but that's, that's kind of it for you in terms of a bad reaction that, that you would not get the second dose. But that's really the only contraindication. Typically, most people experience side effects like fatigue, muscle aches, um, Generally, those are sort of the main things. Uh, and it's important to note that they don't last very long. They last a short period of time. The only uh, caveat to add to that is that people that have had COVID tend to have more severe side effects. And, uh, and then some of the people that I've talked to said that it's, it's like they feel like they're experiencing the same symptoms of COVID on sort of like a mini, mini scale. Uh, they might feel pretty crummy and you might feel crappy enough that you don't even want to get out of bed for a day. So it's a good idea if you do plan on getting vaccinated um, that you think about maybe not working the following day because some people won't feel well enough to work. But the important thing is those symptoms are short lived. It's not like COVID where it can last for days and days. If you feel lousy from the vaccine, it generally only lasts for a day or so. There is some concern about blood clotting, um, but most of the studies have indicated that because these are many, many, many people that are getting vaccinated and when it intersects with a, with a common problem in the population like blood clotting, uh, it's hard to say whether or not there is increased as a result of the vaccine or not. But the general consensus from uh, the vaccine experts is, is that the, the rate of blood clotting is, is not increased in people that have had COVID vaccinations any more than in the general population. But obviously, if you get signs and symptoms um, that are concerning, you have to get medical follow-up. So swelling like the lower extremity, which could be a sign of a blood clot, person who needs to seek medical attention, and headaches, which could be a rare complication of a, of a blood clot in the, in the brain, obviously, you would have to seek medical attention for that too. So, you know, common sense prevails here, but uh, in general, most of the side effects that you get from the vaccine are, are very, very minor and self-limited. But obviously if you don't feel well afterwards, you know, you definitely need to seek medical attention. That's really important. But overall they're safe and they work well. All right, there's a question. Um, if you've been cancer free for the last four years, should they get vaccinated? Right, so that's absolutely, uh, that person is a, is a good candidate for a vaccine. And let's talk a little bit about people that have underlying disorders. You can have cancer, HIV, other immunosuppressive illnesses. We want all those people to get vaccinated and they're eligible to get vaccinated too. The concern is, is that some of these people uh, may not respond as well as we'd like them to because that's, that's sort of traditionally the way that it's been. So for example, um, the pneumonia vaccine, um, the influenza vaccine, vaccines, you know, that are bread and butter in terms of preventing bad diseases. Um, we do advocate that all these immunosuppressed people get these vaccines, but sometimes they don't work quite as well as they, as we would like them. But it's not going to hurt this person who had cancer in the past to get the vaccine at all. So there's no downside to doing it. It may not work as well as we'd like, but if somebody is cancer free, we would have every, every evidence to think that, uh, that they should have a good response to the vaccine basically. Okay. Um, another good question. Um, does a breastfeeding mom need vas vaccination and what about the baby? Okay. So we don't have lots of data about pregnancy and vaccination. And um, there is going to be some more information coming out about that in the near future. But I'll just say a few words about that, that the messenger RNA vaccines, the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine, those vaccines don't get near the, the chromosomes of the mom. Um, and so the, the concept that scientists and physicians have is, is that it, it really shouldn't cause any birth defects. So we don't think that it's gonna happen and it's gonna cause problems, but we don't have the data for that. There's a large registry of over 20,000 pregnant women that have been vaccinated. And we think it's gonna come out pretty soon. We think it's gonna to prove to be safe, but obviously pregnant women you know, have, a, have a decision to make and they should consult with their doctor. And I would advocate that they consider vaccination. I think it's a really good idea, but they may have some concerns about it. So uh, that's a, you know, that's a, a physician uh, patient conversation that they should have basically. It's the, 
in terms of the breastfeeding of a vaccinated woman, it's okay to breastfeed. It's absolutely okay to breastfeed. There's no, there's no contraindication to that, basically. I see a lot of questions around, um, we get a lot of questions, I'm trying to summarize them, sure. um, around um, mandatory vaccinations for college students um, right. and in the workplace. Um, is right. that something you think is going to happen? And, and well, I, I, the only place that I've seen as, 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 men, as recommended that is, is with Rutgers, you know, and I'm a little bit surprised about that. So I'm, um, I don't think that that's going to be a standard. I don't think, for example, at St. Barnabas, where I work, uh, I don't think that's going to be a policy. Um, but I think that, um, you know, I would imagine that I think there's going to be uh, flexibility. And I don't think that actively that anybody is going to be able to be forced into taking a vaccine. I really don't think that's going to come out to be a, a, real, a real concern. I don't think so. OK. And let me see. Um... Well, uh, this one is a little scientific. Is how does the vaccine actually work in the body? Okay, so let's talk about any any kind of vaccine. So you you need a delivery system, okay? And so in the case of the messenger RNA vaccines, it's a little tiny like capsule. It's made out of uh, fats or lipids, and inside is this little uh, piece of messenger RNA that gets you know injected into your arm, and then it gets delivered and enters into the cell. And the cell says, oh, here's a little message. Let's make this protein. And it makes a protein. And the protein is a piece of, uh, of, a, of a message that makes a protein that, that makes part of the, uh, the coronavirus um, crown, if you will. It's a rapid binding uh, site on a, on, a, on a protein that sticks out of the, of, the, of the virus. And that elicits antibodies, which are one way we fight uh, diseases and also T cells, and it makes this a powerful immune response. So that, and then if you go out in the community a couple of weeks later after you've been vaccinated, and you're exposed to the virus, um, and you inhale some virus, for example, uh, then your T cells and your antibodies are mobilized, and they would attack the virus and kill the virus, and it would prevent you from getting an active infection, basically. So that's that's kind of how it works, basically. But the vaccine is really a, just a delivery system for giving a, uh, your body a piece of a message to make a protein generally. It's a protein that's made um, so that your own immune system reacts to it. And that protein is, is from the virus per se. It's not gonna infect you. It's not a live virus or anything like that. It's just a little piece of the virus for just the protein part that is able to generate a powerful immune response to protect you from getting the vaccine I and mean, for getting the virus infection, basically. That's kind of the gist of how it's supposed to work. And it does work that way. And I'm going to take this as the last question. Um, do, we, do you need to get vaccinated annually? Really, really good question. So we don't really know. I mean, it might be like the flu vaccine, but probably not. We think that, the, uh, that your immunity is probably going to last for a few years. What may happen, and you've probably read about this, and it's causing anxiety naturally, is about these variants. So there's some viruses that have, that have adapted so that they don't respond so well to the vaccine. Uh, and, um, but the vaccine makers can sort of counter this and come up with like a booster basically. So maybe next year we'll get a, a booster. You've heard there's this variant from South Africa that's a little more resistant that would just target the variant. So um, I think, I don't think it's gonna be as frequent as the influenza. I think it might, if I had to guess, I'd say maybe every couple of years um, but I don't think it's going to have to be an annual thing. I really don't think it's going to turn out to be that frequent. All right. So um, last question, I will say, I think I'm going to conclude the questions here. Um, can you recommend any resources available uh, for the community that they can look to to find more information? Yeah, so I think that, you know, I, 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 like, I like the NJ uh, Department of Health website. Uh, it's really, it's got a ton of information, you know, maybe more than you can use, but it gives uh, a sense of, of, uh, of answering a lot of basic practical questions and how you can get a lot of answers um, processed there. And uh, it's, a, it's a really valuable website in terms of telling you how things are unfolding in terms of how we're doing as a state with vaccination. Uh, and we're doing pretty well, actually. We really are, and um, um, and I think that 
I encourage people to ask questions and, and consider vaccination and really, because I really see that this is really the, the path out of here in terms of making it safe for everybody to go back into the real world the way that we want it to be, you know, where we don't have to wear masks. And I think that's, that's really my, my take home message. One more thing. Can you repeat that website? Yeah. So it's, um, let me just pull it up for you here. We're going to put it in the chat. Maybe I'll just put it in the chat for you. Okay, yeah, yeah that'll so be great. I'll do that for you. But it's yeah, the, it's the uh, N N J D O H uh, um, COVID nineteen. But I'll I'll put it I'll, I'll pop, paste it into the chat for everybody. Okay, great. Now, um, Angie, I see there's one question in uh, if you look in the chat in Spanish, will you be able to um, at eleven thirty one? Is that relative to, is, I say relative to the vaccine? Can you, yes, ask, well can you ask that question? The, mm -hmm. the two Spanish questions are, uh, will this vaccination protect us against other viruses and variants? But you did answer that. So I think that came a little bit before. And the other one was, will the vaccine be obligatory to students entering the school building? Yeah, so I think, again, I think I, I, I see there's a lot of concern about the mandatory vaccination, but I, I really don't see how, how that can be mandated, frankly. I think that's, you know, kind of a potentially difficult, thorny political issue. And I think that everybody's always going to have the right to refuse. And I don't think that um, it's going to be a, a mandatory issue for students uh, broadly. And uh, I think there will be exemptions. Uh, will be uh, should be available you know at, at through religious or, or other other uh, areas of, of opportunity and stuff so I don't think that's going to be a huge a huge issue for everybody going forward all right so at the conclusion of your presentation thank you um, dr. Miller for your um, insightful and engaging um, presentation I think um, there were a lot of questions and the answers I think everyone is leaving here a little bit more knowledgeable than we were prior to your presentation. So um, I would love for you to ask uh, just a, a question as a check-in question to see who has really, really been paying attention. And, and um, as a re reward of that, we will provide the first person to answer Dr. Miller's question in the chat. They will receive a self-care um, gift bag from say Barnabas Medical Center. All right, so it's the first person to answer the question but you have to wait until the question is answered. All right, so Dr. Miller. Okay, so I, I sent my question out on the chat. <laughs> so. All right, so what can you do to protect your family unit? All right, as you sent it to the panelist. Oh, so I'm, I'm gonna copy that and I'll put it in there for okay, you. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, let me just, let it just go. I think someone already, we're getting a ton of them. But the, the question was, what can you do to protect your family? And um, let's see if I can grab that here. All right, there we go. I see we got a ton of responses. So Angie, who was, or Mr. Sanchez, who was the first to jump in. The chat is going, Mrs. Devon. Yeah, I see it's going. going. I'm going up. I like, that. Going up. I, I like that. I like that a lot. Answers. Um, but Dr. Miller, would you like to announce the correct answer so we can see who was the first person? Oh gosh. Well, I think I think I see a lot of good answers here. I saw, but I saw one that kind of caught my eye. Okay. Is um, and I can't scroll back. I saw somebody that wrote back and said, um, um, "Get vaccinated and wear a mask even after you're vaccinated." I like I like that answer. <laughs> All right, great. So I actually um found that. That's me, Giannata Maldonado. Good. I like that Giannata answer. Maldonado. So but guys, everyone's please... answers were correct. <laughs> What's that? Everyone's answers work. Yes, correct. absolutely. Clean, sanitize, absolutely. wash your hands, wear your mask. Absolutely. 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 And those are those are the main points. And uh, and we can't forget that we still need to do those things. You know, we really can't. And uh, 
All right, so let's give a round of applause. Thank you, Dr. Miller, for, for your efforts. It was a great, great presentation, and we look forward to um, bringing you back because um, things are constantly evolving around the disease state and the treatment options. So it'd be great to um, have an update down the line. I'd be very, very happy to do that, Mr. Devon. So I'm gonna, I, I don't, can I access everybody? I, should I just send that link to the NJDOH to the panelists? Cause I don't see. Yeah, don't you can see... just put it in the panelists and I'll make sure I'll get it out to everyone. No problem at okay. all. Okay, all right, I'm gonna do that, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank My you, pleasure. Dr. Miller. It's My pleasure. All right, so we're gonna be transitioning um, now. Uh, we had some information on um, COVID-19 and treatment options and what you can do to remain safe. Now we're gonna focus a little bit more on healthy eating and healthy eating options, right? We have um, the pleasure of having Ms. Uh, Candace Carter, who's gonna be representing um, Snap Ed. Um, and they're gonna be presenting on cooking matters at the store, all right? So Ms. Carter, um, Ms. Angie is gonna be pulling up your presentation. And whenever you are ready, please begin. Awesome, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're, you all are doing well on this beautiful Saturday morning. Um, thank you for your time. So um, like Mr. Um, Devon said, I am representing SNAP Education. And just to give you a little bit of um, information about SNAP, we um, offer a lot of free nutrition classes in the um, community. My focus areas are Orange and East Orange. I was um, raised in East Orange, so I'm always happy to um, deliver um, pertinent information in um, my community. So um, we have a wide variety of um, free nutrition curriculums that we um, offer, but they, come, they focus mostly on incorporating more fruits and vegetables, incorporating physical activity. And since we are in the pandemic, um, just to piggyback off of what Dr. Um, Miller said, we want to vaccinate and we also want to practice mindful eating because with um, mindful eating, we'll be able to boost our immune system and that can um, also decrease our chances of becoming sick, not only with COVID, but also other chronic diseases. So Ms. Angie's will be doing the next slide. Just let her know, just um, when you want to go to the next slide, just let Ms. Angie know. Okay, good. Thank you. I thought I was controlling, sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is our Cooking Matters at the Store curriculum. And this is just a brief overview of um, tips to help you to uh, make proper food choices once we go food shopping. As we all know, um, supermarkets are in business to make money to um, help us to buy as many things as possible. Um, primarily not the most healthy things. They just want you to walk through those stores and to buy whatever it is you wanna buy. But with our Cooking Matters at the Store curriculum, it teaches you how to um, make those healthy um, food choices. without breaking the bank. Because since we're in the pandem pandemic, I know most of us are shopping on a budget. We're trying to get more bang for our buck. So we're trying to get as many healthy food choices as possible without having to spend so much. So kind of like smart shopping. So some of the main points during this class, we're gonna focus on finding out what a whole grain is, um, fresh foods versus um, frozen food versus canned foods, and also reading the nutrition facts label, also focusing on comparing unit prices. So when we think about eating healthy, we focus on the My Plate Guide. I'm sure most of you remembered in the past, we had the food guide pyramid with tons of stuff on it. Um, some of the things that um, were not so healthy to eat were stacked on the top. The fruits and the vegetables were mainly on the bottom and it became quite confusing for a lot of people. So over the years, we gravitated to 
the MyPlate guide. As you can see, the MyPlate guide is just a diagram of a plate. It focuses on all of the five food groups, which is your fruits, your vegetables, your grains, your protein, as well as your dairy. So the main thing with my plate is that we want to build a healthy plate for every single meal. So whether it's your breakfast, your mid-morning snack, lunch, mid-PM snack, as well as dinner. But most importantly, we want to focus on incorporating more fruits and vegetables. So on the left side of the plate, we have our fruits and we have our vegetables. So we want to make half of our plate fruits and vegetables. So this is something to keep in mind when you think of how you're building your plate. Does it look like this? And if not, it's, it, it can be a work in progress for everyone, you know, when it comes to incorporating more fruits, incorporating more vegetables. So when we think of fruits and vegetables, we have a wide variety of different colors. It's like taste the rainbow, but we're not eating Skittles here. We have red, we have orange, we have purple, we have blue, we have green, you know, we have white, we have brown. So your plate should always look colorful because the, the more colorful it is, it's going to be more appealing, number one. Number two, we're going to get all the nutrients and the vitamins and the benefits from all of the different colors. Like when we think of red fruits and vegetables, those are the heart healthy fruits and veg vegetables that's going to help with your heart. <clears throat> When we think of the orange fruits and vegetables, they contain a lot of beta carotene. So that's gonna help with your eyesight. It's also gonna help to boost your um, immune system. The green um, fruits and vegetables are high in antioxidants. Um, you know, it's gonna help to um, ward off all of those um, infectious diseases. White and brown is gonna help to lower your um, cholesterol levels as well as um, decrease your chances of becoming hypertensive. Um, the blue and the purple help with your cognitive, your mental. So if you find that your memory is slipping, then a perfect snack to have are blueberries. Um, since we are in a, a school environment, blueberries are a great snack for kids to have right before they to take a test or study for an exam because it's going to help them to remember um, what they studied or what they learned. So variety is important. The amount is also important because we also want to focus on portion sizes and also nutrition, all of the um, vitamins and the minerals that you're going to get from all of the different colors. Now, when we think of whole grains, we want to make sure that our half of our grains are whole grains. So these are your whole wheat cereals, your whole grain pasta, um, your whole wheat crackers. So anything that says 100% whole grain, that's what we want to have because whole grains are filled with fiber. Fiber helps to keep you fuller for a longer period of time. And it also helps to move things along. So if you find that you're um, overly constipated, then increase your um, whole grain um, products and that's going to give you more fiber. A very good thing to also do is have um, fruits with the skin on it. Like for instance, if you're going to have an apple, instead of cutting the skin off and throwing it in the trash, just make sure you wash it properly and you can have the apple with the skin because that's going to give you all of the fiber and the roughage. When we think of protein, we want to stick with lean cuts um, of meat. So these are like your chicken, your turkey, your fish. Um, things like beef, we want to limit. Pork, we want to limit because of the high um, saturated content. And for um, our vegetarian um, people, we can also stick with a lot of bean choices. You have a lot of, a lot of um, vegetarian milks that's available to you. Um, a lot of vegetarian cheeses, so you can also incorporate. And you don't necessarily have to be um, vegetarian to um, eat um, vegetarian options. They taste just as good and they are filled with a lot of nutrients. Next, we have our dairy choices. And with the dairy choices, we wanna stick with like our fat-free or um, low-fat choices. So this is your cheese, your milks, your yogurts. So. When we think of my plate, these are all of the things that we're focusing on. And of course, we want to choose foods and beverages that are less in saturated fat, um, less sodium, less added sugars. And to make those changes, we start small and eventually we'll get to the ultimate goal. But the whole idea is um, for everyone to eat healthy as a family unit and to be supportive of the changes, I should say the healthy changes that we want to make. 
So now we have the side-by-side -side comparison of the nutrition facts label. On the left side, that's the original label, but um, over the years, we found that the font was too small, so the new label is on the right. So some things that stick out, you'll see that the serving sizes it's bold and it's um, a bigger font. The number of calories, it's also bold and a bigger font. Um, some of the things that we took out, it's the um, additional vitamins. Like if you go through um, the original label, you'll see that they listed vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, iron. The new label, it just shows vitamin D calcium, iron, and potassium. So some of the um, nutrients were taken out. So like I said, the font is bigger, the serving size, added versus natural um, when it comes to sugars. And you also have the total carbs, which include sugar. So these are some of the things we want to focus on. So if you're diabetic, of course, you'll be paying closer attention to the amount of sugars, also added sugars. If you're um, hypertensive, you'll be paying a closer attention to um, the sodium content. Um, if you um, suffer from heart disease or you have high cholesterol, of course, you'll be paying closer attention to um, the saturated fat content. Ms. Carter, if I may interject just briefly, um, we have simultaneously your presentation is being translated in um, Haitian Creole and in okay. Spanish. Yes, yeah, so if you mind just to um, slow the pace just a touch to oh, allow okay. the translators to be able to um, follow you. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't aware. Okay, <laughs> okay so. Um... On the bottom, we have the potassium. So these are for the people who have heart conditions or um, kidney disease. So all of the information that's needed will be listed on the bottom of the nutrition facts. And as you can see, nutrients that were taken off, those are like vitamin A, vitamin C, since some of these um, deficiencies are rare because just about anything that we eat these days, you'll get a good amount of vitamin A as well as vitamin C. Now, let's focus a little bit more on what it is to be a whole grain product. So a whole grain product is essentially um, made up of three parts. So we have the grain, the bran, and the endosperm. So anything that says 100% whole wheat or whole grain, that is considered a whole grain product. And here is what a grain looks like. And these are the three parts. So we have the bran, we have the endosperm, and then we have the germ. So when we're thinking of a whole grain product, it must have these three parts. So the bran, it's the outer layer and it contains a lot of fiber and a lot of vitamins. So this is where you'll get a lot of the fiber that's gonna help to keep you fuller for a longer period of time. Also a lot of the vitamins. Then the endosperm, contains some of the carbohydrates, you'll get some protein as well as some vitamins. Lastly, we have the germ, which contains the healthy fats, a lot of vitamins as well. So what it is to be a whole grain detective. And this is very important because the biggest misconception is that if a product is brown, it is automatically considered a whole grain product. But you wanna pay close attention to the first ingredient listed on that item. So if the first ingredient does not say whole grain, then that is not a whole grain product. So we can't um, rely on the front of the um, information on the box. So we always wanna look at the ingredients list. So now let's take a look at four different breads. The first we have the country white bread. So this is a hundred calories per slice. And if we scroll down to the ingredients, you'll see that the very first ingredient listed is the enriched wheat flour. 
Now going back to what we just said, to know if it's a whole grain product, the very first ingredient should say whole grain. So right off the back, we know this is not a whole wheat slash whole grain bread. Next, we have the multi-grain bread. Now think of the word multi. When we think of multi, we think of multiple. So it took a number of different grains put together to make this multi-grain bread. So right off the back, multi compared to whole, it's not the same. So we know right off the back that this is not a whole grain product. Then when we look down to the ingredients, we see that the very first ingredient listed was enriched wheat flour, like the country white bread we previously saw. Next, we have the split top wheat bread. And this might be a little tricky because we see the word wheat bread here. So we, we would think, okay, this is a whole wheat bread because the word wheat is in the name. But when we look down to the ingredients, we also see that the very first ingredient is enriched flour. Next, we have the 100% whole wheat bread. So the answer is right there for you. It says 100%. So that means you're getting that entire grain all three parts that we previously discussed. Now, when we look at the ingredients, we see that the very first ingredient is whole wheat flour. So this is a whole wheat bread. So think back of the three um, breads that we saw previously. So the difference was shown in the ingredients, especially the very first ingredient listed and also on the um, name of the bread where it says 100%. So wrapping up with whole grains, now let's focus on three ways to buy produce. We have fresh, we have frozen, and we also have canned. So let's go over some tips when it comes to um, buying fresh, like what are some of the pros and the cons? Of course, with fresh, you have a greater variety. You're able to touch and smell. So if, if you're a visual person and being, you know, being able to look at the fruits and the vegetable, you're able to touch them, you're able to smell them. Like if you pick up a mango and you smell it, you can tell if it's fully ripe or not. Um, and they can cost a lot less in season. But we have to keep in mind if we're buying fruits and vegetables, when they're not in season, we're gonna pay a little bit more because a lot of these fruits and vegetables are coming from out of town or out of the country. So um, transportation cost is factored into the price. So let's say we are wanting to um, buy strawberries during the winter time. Strawberries are typically grown in hot regions like in Florida or California. So if we're wanting to buy um, California during the winter time, then we're gonna pay a little bit more. Some of the cons to buying fresh fruits and vegetables is that they go back pretty fast. So if you buy something, you might wanna use it within one to three or five days. And they, the ripeness and the storage might play into um, that particular fruit or vegetable because some fruits and vegetables tend to um, ripen very fast to the point where they start to rotten if they're not stored properly. And like I said, they can be expensive if you're not buying them in season. So always have a plan for your fresh produce of when you're going to use it and learn ways to freeze your products. So um, maybe meal planning, whether it's every three days or for five days or for the whole week, whatever works best for you. So um, you buy the things that you need and not any extra so you won't have to throw out a lot of things. Now, when we focus on frozen, some of the pros is that the frozen, you're going to get them at the peak freshness. They cost a lot less. So if we're shopping on a budget, then frozen options are very um, economical to actually buy. They have a long shelf life. You can have them for a long time. Little prep is required because they're like pre-cooked and they're available all year round. 
some of the cons, of course, is that they may have added sodium and sugar. So if you're watching your sodium or your sugar intake because you're hypertensive or you're diabetic, then this might not be the best option for you. And there might be texture changes because a lot of times with frozen um, produce, the texture is not there. Most people complain that they get soft and they're soggy and mushy. So um, if that's an issue, then you might want to stick with fresh. So some of the tips is that you want to store these produce at zero degrees and you want to check the label to see the fat and the um, the sodium as well as the sugar content because a lot of frozen vegetables, like if you have a, um, a bag of dinner um, entree, it might come with a sauce. And with sauce, it can be higher um, sodium content as well as fat. And lastly, we have our canned goods. And some of the pros is that canned, they're gonna be um, fresh. They're gonna cost a lot less when you compare them to your frozen as well as your fresh. And you can have canned goods for as long as two to four years. And there's little prep time because you just pretty much take it out of the can, rinse it out a couple of times with water, and you can also have them year round. But like the frozen fruits and veggies, we also wanna make sure that we're mindful of the sodium and the sugar content, as well as the texture changes. So some tips moving forward is to stick with low sodium as well as low sugar um, items. So if you're buying any canned fruits, you wanna make sure it's in its own juice or water. With your um, canned veggies, you wanna make sure that it says no salt added or um, low sodium. And here we have two different kinds of carrots. So on the left, we have the slight regular sliced carrots. And if you notice on the right, the can of carrots says no salt added. Now, when we scroll down to the sodium content, that's where we're gonna see the difference. Because if you notice the price, it's the same, the calories are the same, but when we scroll all the way down to the sodium, the can on the left, it contains 370 milligrams of sodium compared to 50 milligrams of sodium. Huge difference. Okay, and even when you buy um, any vegetable that says no salt added or low sodium, you still want to wash it out um, with water a couple of times just to get rid of that excess um, sodium. Next, let's focus on sugary beverages. We see there's tons of beverages on the market. And a lot of times it's hard to choose, like, should I go towards sugary beverages? Should I increase my water or should I make my own concoction? It's, it's hard, but a lot of times we are bombarded with sugary beverages, especially kids. Um, you know, most of the kids in school, they gravitate towards sodas and, and juices. So if you have um, a lot of the younger kids, it's also very important to cut back on the amount of um, sugar that they're um, getting in on a daily basis because of that high prevalence of childhood diabetes as well as childhood obesity. So here we have fruit juice or not. And this is gonna show you exactly what it means to dig a little bit deeper when it comes to reading everything that's on a label. A lot of times you might say, okay, we just need juice. You run into the supermarket, you just grab a bottle of juice and that's the end of it. Like you're not looking to see what's on the label or what's on the front of the bottle. So here we have cranberry cocktail as well as mixed berry juice. So of course there's a difference in price, but what we're focusing on now is the percentage. So the cranberry cocktail contains 27% juice. Now, when we think of a whole, we think of 100%. So out of 100%, we're only getting 27% juice, which means that the additional percentage was added sugars and um, artificial flavorings. Now, when we focus on the mixed berry juice, right off the back, we see that it says 100% juice. 
So we know that all of the berries that made this um, juice, we got 100% of those berries, not 27% of them. So there's a difference with the um, labeling. So of course, which would be the better option? The 100% fruit juice, because it's gonna contain a lot less sugar. And when we think of kids, like I know I have two little boys and they're always wanting juice, 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 you know? So I always find ways to cut back on their sugar intake. So let's say you have the mixed berry juice, instead of pouring them a whole cup, maybe you might wanna do half and half, maybe four ounces of the juice and maybe add four ounces of water just to dilute it a little. And here we have the nutrition facts label for both. So let's take a look at the sugar content. So it's 35 grams of sugar compared to 27 grams of sugar. And there's also an additional eight grams of added sugar for the cocktail juice compared to zero grams of added sugar. Now, when we look at the ingredients, the very first ingredient listed here was filtered water. And what do we see next? high fructose corn syrup. So this is why we wanna be a nutrition label um, detective as well. Not only a whole grain detective, but also uh, in, an ingredients as well as a nutrition facts label detective, because we wanna know what's in the um, foods that we're eating, what's in the beverages that we're drinking. So it tells you here, high fructose corn syrup is not the best um, ingredient to have. This is where you get the added sugars. Now, when we look at the 100% juice, we see that the very first ingredient listed, followed by the other ingredients, it's apple juice, pear juice, grape juice, as well as raspberry juice. So you know that you're getting the wholesome um, goodness from the fruit and not an artificial flavor. Now let's focus on dairy choices. So with our dairy choices, we have four types of milk. So we have whole milk, we have 2% milk, we have 1% milk and fat-free milk. Now, if we take a closer look at the caloric intake, we'll see that there's not much of a difference. But what we notice is that there's a difference in the amount of fat. But all across the board, if you're going to get the same amount of calcium, as you can see, it says 30% of calcium. You're going to get the same amount of protein. So all across the board, you're getting eight grams of protein. But the difference here, as we can see, is the amount of fat as well as the amount of sugar. The sugar is not that much of a difference, but we're focusing mainly on the saturated fat. So whole milk contains eight grams of fat, the 2% um, milk, five grams of fat, 1% milk, three grams of fat, and of course your fat-free milk, zero grams of fat. And the better options to have would be your fat-free milk or your one or your 2% milk. But most people complain that fat-free milk tastes like water and it's just so hard to drink. It's not the best um, choice for most people. And that's why most people gravitate towards whole milk because it's rich, it's full bodied, like you, you get that flavor as well as the body where um, fat free milk and 1% milk tends to be a lot lighter. So let's say you're drinking whole milk and you want to transition to maybe um, 1% milk or fat free milk, what you can do is let's say you're having one cup of whole milk, you would normally have that maybe with your cereal or something that you're having, you can maybe make that slow transition and maybe have four ounces of whole milk and you add four ounces of the fat-free milk. So just to balance it out. But with just simply doing that, you're able to cut back on some of the saturated fat until you slowly but surely um, transition to either 1% milk or your fat-free milk. 
And another thing to keep in mind is that you also have those um, vegetarian um, choices like your almond milk, your soy milk, um, your cashew milk. There's just so many choices now um, to choose from, but you're gonna get the same amount of protein, the same amount of um, calcium, but you, you're not gonna get that extra sugar. It's not gonna be um, a high amount of sugar or fat. So this is the end of my presentation. If you would like more information or tips on shopping on a budget, meal planning, you can visit our cookingmatters.org for tips. And if you know of anyone who needs food, you can definitely reach out to the Food Bank of New Jersey to get more information. And what I will do, um, thank you, thank you. If I can put it in the chat box, we have um, a link to our brief survey. And I would appreciate it if you all can just click on that link to fill out the brief survey. It's about five or six questions to let us know what you think about um, this curriculum. Like I said, my focus areas are Orange and East Orange, and I am super excited to bring all of this um, free nutrition information to my communities as well as the surrounding communities. So again, thank you all for your time. And I hope that you found um, the information um, helpful. Thank you, Ms. Carter, um, for your um, very informative uh, thank you. presentation. I believe everyone on the call or in the webinar today has uh, are, are much better equipped when they go out shopping um, later this afternoon or tomorrow um, um, as they do their weekend shopping. All right, as um, what we do after every presentation, we have a check-in question. Okay. And um, for this question, I think I'm gonna put in the chat, um, what are three ways for a person to buy fresh produce? All right, that was part of your uh, presentation. So what are three ways to buy fresh produce? The first person to answer that question correctly will receive a mystery gift bag, which may contain some um, cutlery in there to help you um, cook some of the fresh produce that you're gonna be purchasing. I right? saw the answer. <laughs> wow, pretty yeah. quickly. I think uh, yes. I think we do have a winner. <laughs> yes, we do. Right. <laughs> Very good. Well, who is the first one? Because I it's the, the chat is going crazy right now, but who is the first one, <laughs> Miss? Um, Ms. Andrew and Mr. Sankis, who's the first parent to respond? I saw Miss Rhonda Singleton. Yes. yes. <laughs> and Rhonda Singleton. congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. She's also a Lincoln parent, so kudos to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Singleton. You will be receiving a, a, a nice mystery bag, which I'm sure will contain um, some cutlery in there for you. All right. So um, we're going to transition now. We have another giveaway. And then we're going to take a little break, all right? But before we do that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Sanchez, and um, she has um, the question for you. So, Mr. Sanchez. So we're not done yet, guys. I have another question for you all. And Dr. Fitzhugh yes. is he's going to help me because he's going to announce the winner. Okay. Um, the question is, and I think everybody should know this. <laughs> Everybody should know this. When is the first day students are supposed to report back to school for hybrid learning? I'm going to put it in the chat also. When is the first day students are supposed to report back to school for hybrid learning? I'm sure we all have the answer to this. I see, I see a lot of things. They know, they know that response. <laughs> that is great. That's what we want. Yeah, I love it. This they, is where I'm so glad they're, they're, everybody's like on it as relates to the superintendent's report and all the blasts that we're sending out. Our community rocks. All righty, I'm going to announce the winner. Dr. Fitzy, would you like to help me? The first name, right? The first day that we return back to school for hybrid learning. April 19th. 
And the first person to answer this, and I hope I pronounced the name correctly, yep. is Oviani Filizer. That was the, yep. And that is the winner of the answer. We return back to school on April 19th for hybrid learning. That's when the students and staff all return. Right. Remember, letters are going out to those that signed up for hybrid learning um, next week. And for those who con are continuing remote, um, we're going to make sure that you have the best experience as well, as it's been a great experience for you um, holistically. So thank you, thank you, thank you. April 19th. All right, great. And we'll make sure that the um, that mystery bag giveaway will be uh, provided to the um, award winner. All right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take a five minute break. Just so you can stretch, um, go grab some coffee, grab some tea. We're going to return back at exactly 12, 18 p.m., right? 12, 18 p.m. We are going to um, return back. So, Miss Angie, if you don't mind, um, please um, chime in with the rec um, video recordings. 12, 18, we will return back. In the meantime, enjoy um, a video that was created by the Visual and Performing Arts Department under the direction of Supervisor Dr. Donna Sinisgali. Um, and the images are provided by staff and the great work of Orange Public School students. Um, thank you for all of their efforts. Twelve eighteen return.
All right. Okay, it is now 1218. I hope everyone had opportunity to stretch, grab a cup of coffee. And um, now we are gonna get back to our program. Okay, next up, we have a, another a treat. And this is regarding um, the real estate market. Right now, inventory is low, inter interest rates are low, but demand is extremely high. And particularly in Orange, um, the real estate market and the surrounding areas is flaming hot. And um, we have the pleasure of having um, uh, a mortgage um, expert join us today, Ms. Pa Paola um, Gomez, representing Crown Ho Home Mortgage, will be presenting on, are you financially ready to buy a house? All right. So I'll give all this energy. She's already, she's going to um, queue up the uh, presentation. And now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Gomez. Good morning. Can you hear me? Awesome. Good morning, every afternoon, actually. My name is Paola Gomez. I am from Clown Home Mortgage. We are the home of the Lending to Heroes program. I'm excited to share my presentation with you all today. Before we begin, I'd like to share just a quick story about a client of mine, Tony and his wife, who followed the steps that we are about to go over, followed my advice when he was to get pre-approved about six months ago. And later on, I'm going to share with you his success story. Next slide. What are the three most important things to consider when buying a home? First, you want to consider your credit. Next, your savings. And lastly, your income. Before you begin and consider looking, you need to consider the following. Buying a home is one of the biggest purchases of your lifetime. And so learning the correct steps to be ready can save you many headaches down the road. Your credit history and your score will determine the type of mortgage that you're going to qualify for, as well as your down payment and the terms of your loan. Mortgage lenders usually calculate how much house you can afford based on your income and what is reported on your taxes. Having savings and additional reserves is very important based on your living expenses. And so your down payment and the program that you qualify for, you want to be ready so you're one step ahead. Next, we're going to cover credit. What is credit? What defines your credit? Is the ability to borrow money and pay it back. How is your credit reported? Important information about your credit cards, loan accounts, any credit inquiries that are reported to three major bureaus, which are TransUnion, Equifax, and experience. It's reported about every 30 days. Your collect this information and store it, store it in your credit, in your credit for profile for future reference. What drives your credit score? It's responsible use of credit. Credit grantors send updates to each credit bureau, usually once a month, sometimes it can take up to 40 days. And these updates include information about the consumer use of their credit cards or lines of credit and how their accounts are paid and paid on time. Therefore, all creditors will then evaluate your credit report, your credit score, and all information that's reported, such as income, as well as any debt that you may also have to the, determine your credit wording. We are also going to cover savings and down payment to be financially ready to purchase your home. 
Did you know that you do not need 20% down to buy a home? There are many programs and different options. Some of them start at 3%. There are others that only require 3.5%. And then there's other programs that require you to put 5% or more. There are additional savings that you want to have beyond your down payment. These will be your closing costs. These are fees and expenses that you pay to finalize your mortgage, and they can range between 2 to 5% of your loan amount. You also want to consider moving expenses. There are fees and expenses that you pay to finalize your mortgage, as well as when you're buying a home, you have your furniture, you know, many things that you want to consider when purchasing a home. You want to have a little bit of money to back you up when you move in. You never know what could happen. And lastly, we, we, we need to consider your income when purchasing a home. There are different types of income, one of them being, uh, you know, depending on how you receive your income, your employer, or if you're self-employed, will you'll be asked for different documentation. Based on your income and how it's reported, mortgage lenders will then view any debt that you have, put it over your income and provide you with a budget and a purchase price and let you know that's where you need to be. Documentation to support your income. One of them, which is the most common, is when you get paid through payroll and then it's reported on your W-2. This is what you use to file your taxes at the end of the year. There are other ways that people report income. Um, these are called 1099 forms, which is for people that receive commission or freelance workers. And this is also reported on your taxes at the end of the year. So to recap this small presentation, what are the three most important things to consider when buying a home? You need to consider your credit. You need to consider having savings and reserves, and also consider how your income is reported and the type of income reported. We do have uh, other presentations which will cover then the types of programs, which will cover the whole mortgage process. And just to recap what my story at the beginning, my client Tony and his wife followed all these steps. We got them ready. We helped with the credit score, they saved up some money, and now they're under contract and bought their home with 3% down only. I'm sharing with you my email, and I'll be glad to and happy to share my presentation. If you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to help. I also like to let you guys know that the state of New Jersey does have a down payment assistance program. It's $10,000 that they offer um, to anyone in New Jersey. I will also share the link. Uh, we are a participating lender uh, and we can help you go through the process of the down payment assistance program. Um, and I'd also like to share with you that our Lending to Heroes Division here at Crown Home Mortgage uh, is for anyone in the community, police officers, teachers, municipality workers. And through this program, we don't have any lender fees. We've waived your lender fees, which can save you about $1,500 towards your closing costs. If you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Let me take a look at the chat. Does PayPal boost your scoring? Yes, if you have a, a PayPal uh, credit card. Mm -hmm. And I see something from um, Glenn Arnold. It says the Essex County Office offers a first time home buyers program. 
Um, he believes in East Orange, Newark, Irvington, um, offers a full-time um, bias program as well. And they will like your contact information. Feel free to put that in the chat. Ms. Gomez. Sure, I will share my email. All right, another question is, do you handle refinancing? Yes, we handle all types of refinances, uh, rate and term, cash out refinances, investment, anything. Okay. And uh, uh, a positive, um, some feedback from um, a familiar name, Margarita Gomez. A lot of great information when planning to buy a home. Thank you. <laughs> no bias there. <laughs> All right, so um, I saw Ms. Gomez, she put her name, uh, her, email, her email and telephone number inside the chat. So please feel free to contact her directly with any mortgage or home buying um, related questions of home buying financing related questions, I should say. Um, Ms. Gomez, do you have a, um, as you know, at the, at the end of the presentations, we do have a, uh, a check-in question. Do you have a check-in question that you would like to ask the participants? Yes. Okay. What or how much should you have in reserves or additional money when buying a home other than your down payment? You might want to repeat that again. How much in additional money and savings should you have when buying a home? I'm going to give a few people a little chance to answer. Buying a home. I already saw the right answer. <laughs> saw it already? All right. So let's make sure it was the first one. Who was the first person to answer correctly? I'm going to ask uh, my, my, uh, my, my team to identify. Well, we state the answer, and then we'll identify the first one. What is the correct answer? Two to five percent. Two to five percent is all you need to purchase um to be a first time home buyer? To have an additional reserve. So mm -hmm. two to 5% of your loan amount. You want to have additionally other than your down payment. And I, I, think, I, I think I've seen it. Um, um, Ms. Kim Barfield? Yes. Ms. Kim Barfield, you are the winner of the check-in question. And Ms. Gomez, would you like to announce what um, she will be, um, she, she's won? Of course is a gift card, $50 gift card to Star Tavern, best pizza around. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you'll have a, a little nice lunch or a night out on, on Crown Home Mortgage at Star Ta Tavern. So thank you for um, checking in with us, um, Kim Barfield. All right. So um, as we're moving along in the um, presentation, next up, we have Mr. Matt Stevens. He's going to... Um, um, serve in two capacities. Um, one, he's going to give a presentation on um, mentoring. And prior to that, we have another gift giveaway. All right. So, um, Mr. Stevens, will you please lead us in the gift giveaway and then follow us with the mentoring pro um, program presentation? Great. Thanks, Mr. Devon. Uh, that was a phenomenal presentation. I know everyone's looking forward to buying a new home. And I think it's now as a buyer's market. And so we have a phenomenal question that we're going to be asking. I'm going to ask everybody to get out of their cell phones because you can probably do a Google search for the answer to this question. Uh, and we're going to answer the question right after we hear from our Orange High School Bay. Oh, <laughs> 
All right, great, great. Uh, love to hear that band. That's the one, one of the one things I'm really looking forward to when we get back to school is going to the football games uh, and hearing the band play. Uh, so our question, uh, and this is a question really based upon our great superintendent, uh, what is the motto of the Orange Public Schools? Killing me, Ange. Everybody needs that one. <laughs> All right, who was first? Wow. Questions. Yeah. yeah. One more time. We'll repeat it, then we'll announce the winner. Okay. So, what was the motto? What is the motto of the Orange Public Schools? So I guess. Uh, I think we do have a winner. Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, Mr. Sanders, you want to announce that winner? Yes, the first person that I saw to announce the correct answer is Tashonda Moswin. Good to great is the answer. Good right. to great. All right. Thank you for Tashonda for that quick response and, and for everyone um, knowing what the um, district's model is. All right. Um, so with that said, uh, Mr. Stevens, I'm going to look at the press and share with us some of the great information you have regarding mixed green opportunities provided by the district and community partners. Great, okay. Uh, so Ms. Angie, we just uh, plug up the presentation and I'll go right after the video. Youth improve in school. Do you feel your teenage son needs a mentor? Research indicates that mentors can help youth improve in school, gain confidence, and increase self-esteem. Introducing the Omega Sci-Fi Attorney Incorporated AI Chapter effort just mentoring program we provide youth ages 12 through 18 with career exploration and life skills mentoring. Our mentors use the Clio Clicks mentoring app to teach critical thinking through learning modules and webinars. We meet virtually twice a month and explore careers in law, social justice, and entrepreneurship. These activities support the fraternity's four cardinal principles, manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift. Register today for the Dr. Ernest Everett Just Mentoring Program. Visit us at the Omega Family Resource and Learning Center at 132 South Harrison Street, East Orange, New Jersey. Or at our website, www.adapichapter.org. The CLICS program is funded by a grant from the Department of Justice Office of Criminal Justice. Now, just before we get, can we up, um, can we just get all of the panelists to make sure that they're muted, please? All right, thank you. Okay, great. Let's go to the next slide. Do you feel your teenage? Great. Okay, so uh, the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, Ada Pi Chapter, is proud to announce a new community partnership with the Orange Public Schools, focusing on mentoring. Our mentor program, we meet every other Saturday from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock, virtually Zoom. I'm slowing down a little bit so that I can give uh, my translators an opportunity to translate what I'm saying. We provide mentoring, 
for boys and girls ages 10 to 18. And we focus on life skills, college prep, and career exploration. We serve as youth ages 10 to 14 with health and fitness age appropriate activities. We also service youth ages 15 to 18 by helping teens get ready and to get and keep a summer job. Our community partners are working really hard with us to hire our mentees for summer positions. Uh, and some of them that we have right now is, are the Essex County Prosecutor's Office. They are providing an internship, which the deadline is next Friday. So if you have a child between the ages of 15 and 18 years old, who's interested in an internship with the Prosecutor's Office, please have them contact us and we'll give contact information at the end. We're also working with the cities of Orange and East Orange and various members of our fraternity uh, have employment opportunities and they work for government offices, corporations and community development corporations. I'm happy to announce that as, as we speak, um, the program has just ended, uh, but from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock today, we had a phenomenal uh, national town hall with young people from all over the country uh, speaking at a session. Uh, this is where men and boys talk about respecting black women. And I am so proud. I had I was doing double duty uh, today. I had my headphones on and there's a little boy named Jaden Moorhill from Park Avenue School who is really, really doing phenomenal today in the session. Uh, he's one of the younger boys in the group, but he's leading the entire conversation. And so uh, Dr. Hackett and um, the folks over there at Park Avenue School are doing some phenomenal work. But this is just one of the things that we do with the kids uh, as uh, young men. Uh, we talk to them about the need to respect girls and as become men, the need to respect women. We also do a lot of fun stuff. So what the boys that participated in this session today, uh, right now, between now and three o'clock, will have a chance to do uh, compete against other little boys from throughout the country in a video game tournament. And the games that they'll be playing today are Mario Brothers, Fortnite, and NBA 2K Live. They have a thousand dollar prize gift uh, that they can win uh, but for the most part, they just get to compete with other little boys from around the country uh, in the video games. On April 10th, we're really happy to announce that we'll be partnering with the Black Pilots of America to do a career conversation on aviation. They actually have four teenagers between the ages of 16 and 18 who are pilots who now have their pilot license but don't actually have their driver's license yet. So the young men and women will be able to meet boys and girls who are pilots uh, and be able to talk about uh, becoming a pilot as a teenager. On April 24th, uh, we'll be joined by our superintendent of schools, Dr. Fitzhugh uh, and six other uh, well-established individuals uh, leaders in the community, the mayor of East Orange, Ted Green, the president of the Noble um, is Giles Ship, um, some local officers, uh, Larry Martin, um, and uh, we have a new officer in uh, Lieutenant Marilyn Bark, it looks like Barrett. Uh, she's a lieutenant with the East Orange Police Department. Uh, and uh, the district representative, the corridor representative, that's the president of all of New Jersey chapters of the Omega Psi Phi fraternity, uh, he will be providing opening remarks. This will be our opportunity to talk to young people about careers as law in law enforcement. And at the end, we're offering for 10 young people who want to take the police exam that we will pay for them to take the police exam. And then the officers who are in our fraternity will mentor them through the process. 
as a post Mother's Day activity. We're gonna be working with the orange business, uh, the painter's palette uh, and providing paint, brushes and canvas for all of the young people and their mothers uh, to do a Zoom paint. Uh, um, uh, you may be familiar with the paint and sip. Uh, we won't be doing any sipping, but we will be uh, engaging in a painting uh, opportunity where the mothers and children uh, paint a mural. Uh, and then that mural is gonna be uh, in thanking the first responders. And we're working right now with the Black Nurses Association to find a location uh, at the Veterans Administration Hospital to hang this mural. The last two things or three that we'll be working on uh, is um, on June 12th as a pre-Father's Day activity, we're doing a father and son bike giveaway uh, where we actually be teaching the boys and girls how to repair their bicycles. We have uh, 10 bicycles left uh, and the program is open to the public, uh, but young people have to be registered to uh, receive a bicycle. We'll be providing registration information at the end. For young people who want to be coders and gamers, we're offering a, a, an advanced mentor program from May 8th through June 26th, every Saturday from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, where they will learn how to become gamers. Uh, so they'll learn how to develop a website and how to create a gaming business. Uh, for, for themselves uh, as an entrepreneurial experience for the summertime. For the seniors that are here in Orange uh, and East Orange, uh, we are offering uh, a $1,000 scholarship uh, and our scholarship application will be going out on April the 1st. Uh, the due date will be May 31st and uh, the award date will be June 19th. The question that we ask young people to answer is life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond to it. We ask them to write an essay based upon their life using this scenario. And again, the scholarship is for $1,000 um, for young people in the Essex County area. And that is our mentor program. Uh, we can be reached uh, and you can uh, register your young person uh, for the program at www.adapichapter.org and you would go to the Dr. Ernest Everett Just Mentoring Program. This program is in partnership and working through the Office of Community Engagement. I am the contact. My name is Matt Stevens and I can be re reached at 973-677-4000 extension 6330. Thank you. And I look forward to any questions, comments, or concerns. All right, I'm checking the chat now and there's a lot of um, positive reinforcement. So thank you for all the participants um, in regards to um, your recognition for the mentoring opportunities and family engagement opportunities that, be, that has been provided by the district. Um, like Mr. Stevens said, if you have any questions regarding upcoming programs, please feel free to um, reach out to us. Definitely follow us on social media. We post all programs on our social media links. Um, that will be Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, Ms. Joan Perkis and myself, we update that regularly and often. So please, um, if you have not signed up, um, take a look um, or visit our, the district website at www.orange.k12.nj.us, um, the Orange Public Schools um, website, and you'll get um, access to all of that information as well. Um, I don't see any questions regarding Mr. Stevens regarding the mentoring program. And um, Mr. Stevens, um, I wanna, if you may, Will you be able to ch chime in for Ms. Carter? She, um, she is not with us in the meeting. Just give her, if you have any information on her book, um, if you could chime in on that. Great, okay. Well, uh, Ms. Carter uh, is a phenomenal uh, 
a person. Uh, I've known her for years. Uh, she uh, was the reading specialist with the Orange Public Schools uh, for uh, at least 25 years. Um, she is retired now uh, and she has a website. It's uh, kpcarterwrites.com. Uh, she's an author, a speaker, and an educator. And we wanted her to talk today, but she had some complications that she, uh, she was on, but she had to get off. Um, and um, her book, she has a series of books uh, out uh, called the Lizzie B. Hayes series. And again, her books can be um, found on her website is kpcarterwrites.com. And um, if we can, can one of the teammates please put that um, website in the um, chat? So if anyone is interested, they can um, log on and get information regarding um, Ms. Carter's um, books. Um, we're coming up on the close of today's uh, meeting. But before we close out, um, Ms. Angie, can you please place um, on screen um, the visual of the Padlet and also paste the Padlet link in the chat. Um, for all of the high school students who are logged on, please click that Padlet link that's in the chat. Um, there's going to be a question regarding um, today's uh, conference. We want you to put your name, school, and grade on um, that palette so you can get credit. Name, school, and grade. And the question that you'll be answering is, what is one thing you learn, and how will you put that lesson into practice? Once again, what is one thing you learned and how would you put that lesson into practice? Um, Ms. Angie, you can stop sharing the screen on that one. And in addition to this, at the conclusion of today's um, conference, you will be emailed a survey. So please check your um, survey and complete that um, information because that provides us with some feedback. So, so when we're delivering programming like this, we want to make sure we're meeting the needs uh, of the community. And it's what you really want to see. You know, we are all about um, engaging the community as we stated earlier in the program, education builds community. So your feedback is valued and extremely important to us. And we want to make sure we um, put that information into practice. All right. Um, once again, if you have any questions regarding any of the events today, you can also contact um, myself, Mr. Devone, at, um, and I'm going to put my email address in the um, chat for one second. All right. So you just send me an email and we will follow up with any questions that you may have. Um, we do have the presentations, so we can get out the presentations from um, Ms. Candace Carter regarding SNAP Ed, as well as Ms. Paula um, Gomez um, regarding um, financing the purchase of home. So thank you to all of our panelists today. Um, it was great information, and um, I think it was enjoyed by, by everyone. Thank you for our translators, Mr. Profet and Ms. Vivian Paez, for making sure that everyone was able to participate and engage in today's um, activities. And um, we hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon and the rest of the weekend. So take care and we will see everyone who has signed up to come back to school on April 19th. Be well and be safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.